Well, we're going to get right into our Father's Word here, and um, tonight as we do the, the lecture on Kindle the Fire. You know, this morning's lecture kind of laid groundwork for that. Open your Bibles, if you would, to Luke chapter 12, and we ask that word of wisdom from our Father. Luke chapter 12, we're going to pick it up with verse 49, and it reads, I am come, this is Christ speaking, I am come to send fire on the earth, and what will I if it be already kindled? In other words, he expects you, God's elect, to kindle it, fan it, you know, spark it. But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straighted till it be accomplished? Suppose ye that I am come to bring, give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. This lets you know the time sequence, and that's what I want you to pay attention to tonight, is the time. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two and two against three. Father shall be divided against the son, the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother, the mother-in-law against the daughter-in-law, and and um, the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. So, and that, that's the way it goes when the Antichrist appears, and you have to separate yourself away from the uh, elements of this world, because the elements of this world they're not going to cut it. But what is this fire? That's what ever is ever important. If you were to go, we're not going to go there, but if you were to go to Luke chapter 9, verse 54, it would say, you know, they wanted to stop over. They were on their way to Jerusalem. They wanted to stop over in Samaria. It was getting late, and they didn't want them. And one of the disciples said, you want us to do like Elijah and call fire down from heaven and destroy them? And Christ said, you don't know what spirit you're in here. Okay. Well, because they were innocent people. You don't call fire down on innocent people. Simply because they didn't know the Lord. Then he would continue in that uh, 54, 59th verse to say, I have come to save the world. Okay. To those that will listen. And so it is. Now, go with me, if you would, to Revelation. And we're going to go to Revelation... Chapter 10. And, well, and in Revelation chapter 10, I want you to mark the seventh verse. I want you to listen to it carefully. Pay real close attention. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, you know who the seventh angel is? He sounds the last trump. The seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. Now, I want you to note something, and I don't want you to just take this lightly, but the word begin here is melo in the Greek, and it means about to sound. So what does that say to you? I'm, I want you to check that out in, in your strong concordance. I want you to see it with your own eyes. That it should be translated when the seventh trump is about to sign, sound. So what does that mean to you? It means you're in the sixth. Okay. You're in the sixth trump. And for what reason? So that the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. In other words, that the seven vials would be dumped. The set, a vial, as it is written in the Greek and the, in the New Testament, Revelation, it's not a little bitty dainty thing. It's a short, wide-mouthed base. And when it dumps, it goes all at once. No holding back. Turn with me to the 16th chapter of this book of Revelation. And... Listen carefully. I want you to pay particular attention to time. 16.1 And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the, the, the vials upon the wrath of the wrath of God upon the earth. Verse 2 And the first went 
This is your first vial, mark it. And poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had what? Which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. Now that's the first wrath. Well, what does that say? Well, it, it means that the Antichrist is already here. Because these people have already worshipped the image that he sets up in Revelation 13. So, the very first vial goes out far along, not far along, but partly along in the sixth trump. That's when your work and your obligation comes into being. So this brings this forefront to you, to know and to understand. And naturally, that's the exact same thing that happened in Exodus chapter 9, verses 8 through 12. That was the same thing as coming out of Egypt. It's what happened there. Verse 3, And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And of course, waters is the people that were contrary. And that particular plague you'll find in Egypt was, uh, was um, in the book of Exodus, chapter 7, verse 20. All these fit. Okay. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the waters and fountains of waters, and they became blood. Again, Exodus chapter 7, verses 19 through 24. Verse 5, And I heard the angel of the waters say, This is the people's. Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art, and wast, and shall be, because thou hast judged us. In other words, God is always fair, honest, and he, he chooses as it should be chosen. He acts as he should be act, as, because it's always fair. Verse 6, For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they're worthy. In other words, that's what they had coming to them. Verse 7, And I heard another uh, out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. 8, And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. You know something strange? That wasn't what happened coming out of Egypt. That did not happen as one of the plagues against Egypt. This is a new thing, and it happens in the fourth vial. The number four means earth, and it has to do with the very sun itself, it has to do with fire, because what is it going to do? Verse 9, And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. That didn't happen in the plagues of Egypt. But it's real important to you, extremely important to you in this generation. Let's continue on, and we'll backtrack to it here in a moment. What was it God said he wanted, uh, what did Christ say he wanted done here on earth? Something about kindling a fire? He came to bring a fire? What do you think happens when the sun is smitten? This is speaking spiritually, and you want to wake up to it, okay? For that fire is there for your advantage. Verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. You can read of that in the, in the second chapter of the great book of Revelation, where they poured the, poured the truth out on the seat of Satan, when Antipas was made a martyr, and in the 17th verse, it says, you get a new name. You can have of the secret manna. What was that? The truth. That truth is there for God's election to absorb, to understand, and to follow. Verse 11. And bless them, the God of heaven, because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. Uh, people who think they're right... It doesn't matter how often you tell them they're going to be deceived if they worship the false Christ. They're going to do it one, because they're ignorant of that fact. But you're going to hold the line. And you're going to do it only God's going to strengthen your arsenal. 
verse 12, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, and the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. This, this was one of the plagues. It was Exodus chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. Okay. And it matches. 13, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. One, out of the mouth of the beast. Two, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Three, offices of Satan himself. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth into the kings of the earth. Which kings? Kings of the earth. And of the whole world, together them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. 15, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see the shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon, which is to say the gathering place of the crowd. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. Now, we're in the sixth trump here, as we started out. We're still in the sixth trump when that fourth vial is poured out on the sun, which was a plague that did not happen in the coming forth out of Egypt, but it shall happen to this generation when we do the repeat, at, just as it was coming out of Egypt, with God Almighty on the throne. Go with me, if you would, to the great book of Acts. Book of Acts. Chapter 1. Book of Acts, chapter 1. Verse 5. And it reads, For John, this is Christ's teaching after the resurrection, and John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Is that what you're going to do right now? Not at the first advent. That was to come at the second, okay? Seven. And he said unto them, listen carefully, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. Verse 8, But ye shall, not maybe, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Now, there's something you must know about this. The word power, where it is listed in verse 7 concerning our Father, is kaiosia. It means a superhuman power. That's what our Father has. When you receive power, the word in the Greek is dunamis, which our word dynamite comes from. It's a lot of power, but it doesn't equate to our Father's. You got it? And so it should be. All right. Now, Turn on with me to chapter 2. And let's pick it up with verse 3. What is it they receive with that spirit from our Father? Verse 3, And there appeared when this came, there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire, right from the sun. And it was set upon them, uh, set upon each of them, all of God's 7,000 when they receive that, and when that time comes of that fourth vial, it's going to be a different day. The arsenal will be loaded. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. There's nothing unknown about this, okay? As the Spirit gave them utterance, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, that's Judeans, devout men out of every nation under heaven, so all dialects all languages. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. Do you know why? Because that every man heard them speak in his own language. That's what that language is coming from the Father. He can do that. 
And not only that, but it has power, lots of power. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not these which speak Galileans? These are country boys out here in the country, and they're talking, they're speaking all these languages, and we understand. Of course, it wasn't they that were speaking. It was the Holy Spirit. Just as when you're delivered up before the false messiah, that same language will come forth. It will not be you speaking, but it will be that Holy Spirit. And how hear we every man in his own tongue wherein we were born. And so it was that that spirit of fire came upon God's election. If you were to go to the book of Joel, <clears throat> Or if we were to continue reading in the second chapter of Acts, then both sons and daughters would speak in this tongue. It was prophesied way back in the book of, um, of uh, Joel in chapter 2 that the same thing would happen. That tongue of fire would come upon his children and they would speak. That will not happen until after the false messiah appears on earth. Open your Bibles to Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11 verse 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. This rod is not, for, is not for measuring to build, but for correction, all right? Verse two, but the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall be tread under foot 40 and two months. Every prophecy that has ever been given concerning Satan is in months, which is moons, because he is lunar, lunatic of the night. And it has to do with him. Verse 3, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. Now this is days, which is solar, which is of light. And it has to do with the two witnesses. What do they have the power to do to the elements? Verse 4. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Our Father means business. It's closing time. We're coming to that time. The arsenal will be magnified and it will be very effective to those that come against the throne. Verse 6, These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as oft as they will. And so it is that they could do this. This is not a new thing with our Father, and you want to get used to it. Um, go with me to 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 1. Okay. Old Testament. Go with me to 2 Kings chapter 1. Old Elijah is having a hard time. The king has just about put a death sentence on his old head. And he's kind of headed for the high country, the bushes. Verse 8 of chapter 1, 2 Kings. And they're inquiring as to who this man was that gave this prophecy. And they answered, he was a hairy man and girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. And he said, it is Elijah the Tishbit. It's old Elijah himself. And then the king sent unto him a captain of 50 with his 50. And he went up to him, and behold, he sat on the top of a hill, and he spake unto him, Thou man of God, the king said, <clears throat> have said, come down. Verse 10. 
And Elijah answered, and he said to the captain of 50, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy 50. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and the 50. The Elijah ministry is a strong ministry. The Father has always loved him. The Father would not let anyone bury Elijah. And who was it that appeared with Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration? Moses and Elijah. Who, well, who were those two witnesses? Well, who would be two better? Okay. This, was, this fire from heaven was not a new thing to Elijah. Okay. Also, and again also, he sent unto him another captain of fifty and his fifty. And he answered and said unto him, O man of God, thou, that thus hath the king said, Come down quickly. Verse 12, And Elijah answered and said unto them, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee in thy fifty. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him in his fifty. Don't ever think your father is not able to protect his own. That's why you never want to be afraid of anything when you use common sense. Your father's in, he's still on the throne. I don't care what politics do or anyone else. He still occupies that seat. And he still controls that fire. All he has to do is speak. Verse 13. And he sent again a captain of, uh, of the third 50 in his 50. And the third captain of 50 went up. He's heard about this. He came up and he fell on his knees before Elijah. And besought him and said unto him, O man of God. I pray thee, let my life and the life of these fifty thy servants be precious in thy sight. Behold, there came fire down from heaven and burn up the two captains and the former fifties with their fifties. Therefore, let my life now be precious in thy sight. That's repentance, okay? And the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, Go down with him, be not afraid of him. And he arose and went down with him unto the king. God always takes care of his own. And he protected Elijah through all of that. Turn with me, if you would, to the last chapter in the Old Testament. It's called Malachi. Malachi. And go to chapter 4, which is that last chapter. And let's read a little bit about what happens here. Malachi chapter 4 having to do with the end times. Verse 1 of chapter 4, the very last chapter in the Old Testament. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. There's a day coming, there's not going to be any more evil. There will be no evil elements or rudiments in this world. Not even a root left for them. Why? Because we're going into the millennium where some will be tested and then those that can't cut it, they're out of here. We don't want them anymore. They're gone. Okay. Listen very carefully. But unto you that fear my name, you love me, shall the Son, S-U-N, the Son of Righteousness, arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. To go forth means to be set free. Boy, calves romp and run, and they have a ball when they're let out of the barn for the first time after a winter, a hard winter. That's what he's saying. You're going to be happy. Why is the son, S-U-N, instead of S-O-N, utilized here? Because of the fourth plague. Because this is the son we're talking about. Let me ask you a question. Who's the light giver? Who is the light giver? We have only one. It's Christ. He is our light. And he never forsakes us. He never lets us down. Now, if you think we're talking here about the fire that the flesh body is quite worried about, you're, you're thinking about a different kind of fire. Our Father is a consuming fire. Do you know something? Our Father can speak and something becomes nothing. All he's got to do is speak. 
or he can speak and nothing can become something because he has that ability. He is a consuming fire. And do you know who fights our battles for us mostly in the spiritual war? He does. And he's quite capable of taking care of you and at the same time sharing that power with you that you have the ability through the Holy Spirit that when you speak it can't be dealt with it parts the waters which are the people good from the bad and it shall be let's continue on verse 3 and ye shall dread tread down the wicked for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. And, and that's the way it is. They're not going to be any more. Remember ye the law of Moses my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. And, and so it is that our father utilizes, this is why Elijah appeared with him on the Mount of Transfiguration. But we have that power and that ability that nothing can interfere, even drums of war. Our father has that ability and he's going to share that fire with you. That's why that, that fourth vial, which is the smiting of the sun that scorches men. Now let me cut you in on a, little, a real deep secret here. Did it not say in the 11th chapter that the mystery would be known before the seventh trump? As to how he would share this? How that he would go? You can figure kind of time with this because from the first vial right up to the last, you're dealing with the closing of the sixth trump and coming right up to the seventh. So you can kind of fix where we are in a sense or how long it will be that that power will be here on earth by figuring and understanding. All you are is a watchman. Just watch. Don't set a whole new plan and flight plan and end up in the wrong part of the country stay with the Word of God. Probably in closing, I would turn you to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 11. And I'm going to pick it up, if I may, with uh, verse 5. When you get turned there, verse 5 of chapter 11, 4 we're going to go. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 4. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with what? With the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. That is the Ruach, the Holy Spirit. This is speaking of our Lord and Savior at the final battle. He doesn't take prisoners. Okay. If somebody doesn't volunteer, they're out. Okay. Verse 5, And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins. He's always fair. And faithfulness the girdle of his reins. This is in the millennium now. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. And the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. It will happen. That's peace, okay? And the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. There won't be any carnivores there. All spiritual bodies. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp and the weaned child shall put his hand on the crocodile trice den. The snake can't hurt him. Okay. Why? Because it's in the spiritual body. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Do you know why? Because you're going to put it there. Okay. You're going to speak. That fire is going to burn truth into some minds. 
and Father will back you up on it, and that is the true Holy Spirit as it comes at that fourth vial when the Son of Righteousness strikes. And that power, dunamis, comes into this world. And we're approaching that time. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people that be Christ. To it shall the Gentiles seek and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time. Not the first advent, this is the second one. The second advent, time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, that's where they went in, and from Egypt, and from Pathros, and from Cush, from Elam, and from Sinar, that's Babylon, and from Hemoth, that's where the Kenites are, and from the Isles of the Sea, that's all over. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcast of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The envy also of Ephraim, that's the ten northern tribes, shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off, period. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of Philistines toward the west, and they shall spoil them of the east together. We win, okay? They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. Listen carefully in closing. Listen real carefully. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. And with a, his mighty wind, that's the breath spoken of in verse 4, shall he shake his hand over the river and shall smite it into seven streams. That's for 7,000 of God's elect into seven venues and make men go over dry shod. Why? Because of your work. Because of God's work. Some of you have known you had a destiny when you were a child more than you'd been taught. And God brings forth his truth in this end generation for his children to stand, to know, and to love, and to love our brethren, whereby we lead, guide, and direct. Verse 16, listen carefully, this concludes. And there shall come, there shall be a, high, a highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that we, he came up out of the land of Egypt. And so it is, it's exactly the same. You don't have anything to worry about. And Father, when that sun is struck with that fourth vial, then it is for your benefit that that spirit increases. Anytime, you know, but there, there's one thing I must caution you. I want you to really make a home study of all this. The, this, this thing that I caution you about is the truth was being poured out on those that were deceived long before the sun was smitten. That means you're going to cut it regardless, okay? You're going to begin. As a matter of fact, we already are. Look around you, okay? Look around you. We already are. We're making a difference. God's word is true. He gives us strength and he gives us power to take that truth to our brethren that are desperately in need of that knowledge and that wisdom and that fire. I come not to bring peace, but I send fire, and how happy I will be if I find it already kindled. Fan it. I mean puff at it. Keep that fire going. Keep it kindled. Plant those seeds, and our Heavenly Father will always bless you. The Holy Spirit, when it comes into you, is that fire that the enemy must fall away from. It parts them. It divides them. And it is a very simple thing. You know, he told us in Luke chapter 21 that what you say at that time, even the gainsayers will be convinced by it. Do you know why they are convinced by it? Because it's the true word of God. That's why. That is the mystery of God's conclusion 
as he brings forth the vials that complete and consummate the sixth, the very sixth trump and, and brings in the seventh, whereby we can say at that time, it is done. And I tell you, it is done. The Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the mark of the beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the mark of the beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13 verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of the mark of the beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. We, we thank our Father that um, he's led you to the truth, and, and I, I see that your family needs you. So let the Father know. Just talk to him. Let him know what the situation, just like you've written me there in that letter. Just talk to Father like that. I got my family to take care of, and here I have this terrible... Uh, cancer, uh, I'd like for you to heal it so that, not for my sake, but for my family's sake, anoint yourself with the oil of our people and, and uh, thank our Heavenly Father. Um, Gilda from um, Virginia. I'm sorry, that's, is that the name? Uh, yep, that's the name, Gilda. Okay, question. Could one be one of the elect and still be learning and have Pastor Murray as a teacher during the millennium? Uh, most likely you're going to be teaching through the millennium, okay? And um, <clears throat> we're all going to be teaching. You see, when, when one is in the spiritual body, you don't have to ask them if they know the Lord because everybody will. What will be taught in the millennium is discipline, and you, you, you're going to be able to whip that out real good, okay? You, you hang tough. Velma from Georgia, are we in the sixth trump? No, no, now what happens in the sixth trump? Read the sixth trump in the book of Revelation. What happens in the sixth trump? The Antichrist comes to earth in person. Now, has the Antichrist come to this earth in person, de facto, visible, and performing miracles in the sight of man? No. So, therefore, the sixth trump has not happened, okay? We're in the fifth, okay? So, but it could happen. We've got types you're running rough here. Uh, Helen from Florida. I'm writing to see if you can tell me if a mentally ill person... A, a mentally ill person is not responsible for their acts. Many times there's toxic imbalances, chemical imbalances. Things are just not right, okay, because of this crazy mixed up world with the pollutants and, and uh, sprays and so forth, all the toxic things, and, um, and, and accidents as well at birth and other times. And uh, uh, so you, you need to know that our Father loves his children, all right? And um, let, know that, he, that your son is with the Father. For to be absent with this Father is to be, from this body rather, is to be present with the Father. And, and uh, he does not hold someone accountable if it is not their fault. And he alone, that's why he's judge, he knows. So don't you judge. But know and understand that you're going to see him in the millennium and you will know him and recognize him. And um, if, if he does need help, you'll be able to give it to him there. He will be in a spiritual body that certainly has no mental problems in the millennium age. Dear um, Durley, I, th I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Durley from Oklahoma. The one-third that fell with Satan, are they here on earth now or will Satan bring them with him when he is kicked out of heaven? 
No, the one the one third is a lot more than will come with him. Only seven thousand fallen angels, Nephilim, will be with him when he's kicked out. The the one third would run up into um, billions of people. Okay, right, uh, um, one or two billion. Now. God is always fair, so naturally, if they were deceived in the first earth age, I have to believe that God will have them living in the final generation when the Antichrist appears here to see if they will follow him again. Okay. I truly believe that the reason, another reason that you can know that that one-third is here is that this generation from 1948 has changed and the world is not the same and the people are not the same and many of them um, could care less about the father or anything about him you know I can remember when it was automatic that if a senior citizen was approaching a door uh, uh, as a young person child or even would run and open that door for them assist them and help them you know you were trained to do that. You were trained to respect your elders. And, and um, I wonder how many school teachers today in classrooms where they are not allowed to correct past certain points that are sassed and even thing, anything almost cursed and, and ridiculed by students at the same time when that teacher is dedicated to trying to teach them dedicating their life to help them, how I'm sure there are many of them have noticed a change. And um, some of us that have a little gray hair have experienced these changes. And it is only fair that our Father would do that. And which, if that equation is correct, then you can rest assured it's not going to get better and better. Until the, until the seventh trump sounds, it's going to get worse and worse till the seventh trump sounds. But God always protects his own. I don't want that to sound too negative because it isn't for a, a soldier of the Lord. Okay, He takes care of his own and his own know how to take care of themselves. Uh, Margaret from Texas, I have a question. Is John the Baptist the same John that wrote the book of the Revelation? Because I know that he was beheaded and... He must have had his, this vision before. No, you, you see, you got it right. He, it was not John the Baptist. John the Baptist was beheaded, and he would have no way to write a book, but to the revelation on the Isle of Patmos in the year 96 uh, A.D., okay? Because he was, he was uh, beheaded many years before that. No, it was, it was um, the John, St. John, the same writer of St. John, the Epistles of John, and the book of Revelation. He was the disciple that Jesus loved and counted on. He was given much, and God expected much from him. But at the same time, from his heart, God loved him, and the Lord loved him no better than he did anyone else, okay? And, um, great. Uh, Joe from Kentucky, my question is, if we know the truth and live the truth, but we die before the return of Jesus Christ, do we come back to live through the tribulation? Also, if, if we're not living right, do we come back to live through it? Now, you don't, we, no one comes back through the tribulation of Antichrist, okay? Now, at the seventh trump, some of God's elect will come back with him. He's putting that army together right now, okay? And uh, you can rest assured some people that are definitely God's elect, which it makes them the remnant. When, when someone passes away before Christ returns and that know the truth, then they are the remnant spoken of in, in Romans chapter 11, okay? There has always been that remnant that brought the seed, the truth, forward, generation to generation, the real truth. And, and they are called that remnant, and they are the equivalent of the elect that, 
that primed the pump, so to speak, that kept the truth coming. But no one would come back during Satan's tribulation. That, that's for us to cut it. But we've got a lot, a lot, a lot of help because there is one that will come and help, and, or more than one. There are the two witnesses, there, which I believe will be Elijah and Moses, and there is the Lord Jesus, there, there is um, the Holy Spirit himself that will speak through you, okay? Also, how do you repent your sins? Do you ask for forgiveness for your sins or what? All of them. And today's lecture should have uh, answered that for you. Jeanette from West Virginia. Let's see, Jeanette, you're quoting scripture here. Um, my question is, who, who then who built the cities in verse 26 of Jeremiah chapter 4? That was in the first earth age. All the people were here. Okay. Every, every soul, every soul that ever has been was here. Okay. This is why God would say in Genesis 1 when he destroyed that first earth age and, and pulled every, all the spiritual bodies back to heaven and, and um, destroyed every city, everything that was here. But naturally, the children built the cities. A lot of people try, that are ignorant of God's word try to think in Jeremiah chapter 4 that speaking of Noah's flood, it was not Noah's flood. It was far larger than Noah's flood, okay? It was the katabo, the overthrow of Satan when the first earth age was destroyed and this earth age brought in. So uh, the people did. You know, I, I, Jeanette, I wish you would order my work on the three earth ages, okay? Or, or either take your companion Bible, go to Appendix 146, and um, understand the catabo, I think it would help you a lot. Rachel from Tennessee. I have a question, hope you can help me with it. Our daughter, a 47 year old, has mistreated and used me and my husband again since she was 15 years old. We did our best with, um, Rachel, I wanna tell you what you do, okay? Go make a note of Second Thessalonians chapter to, I'm sorry, chapter 3, verse 6. Start reading there. And this is what you do to a child or a brother or a family member that just absolutely will not adhere to anything of concerning getting along. You still do, do not treat them as an enemy, but you do not feed them, not be an enabler. You don't support them. And now, we're not talking about handicapped people here. Okay, we're talking about people that are belligerent and, and just don't care. Okay, so um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 beginning with verse 6, it'll help you out a bunch. And you'll, it, it, in this generation it seems this happened quite often. We'll be remembering you in prayer and it'll all come out um, sooner or later. Martin, Martin from Ohio. Uh, question, even though I can attend your church every week in person, I'm afraid to trust many churches. Uh, can I still be a member of your congregation? Thank you, Martin. Now, Martin, you got to take that up with the Lord, okay? He handles the membership of this church, okay? And if the Lord Jesus Christ accepts you, welcome. You're a part of the congregation. But he keeps the records there. You can't send me a church letter or something. Your, your records are in the book of life, okay? And when you, this is an outreach of our church. You're in church when you study with us, okay? You don't, you don't have to be there physically because we are gathered together through the ether waves around, all the way around the world in studying God's word. So you're all right. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you love the way we teach. It is the word of God that does it, okay? Linda from Louisiana. Everyone is born innocent into the flesh in the second earth age. If, if you were bad in the first earth age, does God put you into a body, for example, born with parents who abandon you, born poor, having to work for the rest of your life? The Bible says you reap what you sow. I hated Esau and Jacob I loved before they were born. That's what God said, yes. 
question. Is God giving this soul what he deserves because he went against God in the first earth age? Absolutely. Esau did, had no respect whatsoever for his heritage. He didn't care about God. He didn't in the first earth age, and, and I'm not going to judge him in this earth age, because uh, he did one or two things that come around pretty good, and any part of his family that, that loves the Lord will be saved, okay? If you were good in the first earth age, does God reward you with both parents to depend upon, born wealthy and does not have to work for a living because his father was rich? Question. Is God rewarding this soul for what he did right in the first earth age? I, I would hate to be born to rich parents and never have to work or earn anything for myself. Do you, you think that would be a blessing? I, that'd be a wimp. That, that'd be a weasel. Okay. Um, I, I don't care if you were born to a, a working family that was quite wealthy I would hope you wouldn't sit on your can just because your parents made it. You'd be a lazy, no good stiff, and God would never bless you, and you would be unfit. So I, I don't know, I don't appreciate your way of thinking concerning what's a blessing. You know, many people fall on hard times. Don't ever try to, don't try to blame your parents for where you are. And you've got two hands, and if you're healthy, and, and I don't know whether you are or not, but I'm saying God would know, then get out there and hump it, okay? There, there's no sin in being poor, but it's kind of a sin to stay that way. Because I don't care who you are in this great nation we've got, unless some socialist or communist comes along and upsets everything we got going for us that we many of us have fought for, shed blood for, to keep communism and socialism out of this nation, and we'll do it again then um, uh, certainly it's a blessing to work and move ahead and gain something, okay? Um, God does, naturally, uh, any, anyone that was born a tear was, deserved it from the first earth age. God makes that very clear. In, um, in, but uh, anyone that loves the Lord, I don't care what their parents did. You can always work your way up. And you know, uh, what do you have against work anyway? I, I, don't, I don't understand how somebody would not want to work, would think they would be rich and just sit around all the time. What a boring, dumb life that would be, okay? God sure wouldn't appreciate it, and he sure wouldn't bless it, okay? So have a good one. Annie from Tennessee. I have been recently married. I'm 27 and my husband is 25. I just wondered if it was wrong for us to disagree over Scripture. I've listened to this ministry since I was 11 years old, and he attended a certain church since he was born. What are some good Scriptures to prove to him that there are three world ages? Well, I, I would like for you to get my tape on three world ages. I think it might be worthwhile to you, but naturally the scriptures that pertain to it mostly uh, the reason I say you need to you got to go into the Hebrew just a little bit okay and it's a great help which if you've been with me that long you know how to handle Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 and 2 okay also Jeremiah chapter 4 that the lady earlier re had reference to is when he destroyed the first earth age but Second Peter chapter 3 gives you all three earth ages. And it's not talking about the flood of Noah. It's talking about that first great one overthrow. And um, so I, I, think you, I think you would enjoy it, okay? And um, it's good that you've been with us this long. Now, be gentle, okay? Be very gentle with your husband and, and, um, and, and, uh, and move very, I mean, you know how you fish? You don't just get a club and start beating fish to get death. Okay? You take the line and you, you bring them along real easy to get them to take the bait. Okay? And so you've you got to be a fisher of men, even if in your husband's case. Um, and um, I'm happy for you. You'll do fine. You just hang tough. Pastor Murray, Seth from Pennsylvania, a question about Acts 2.42.
What is the apostles' doctrine? Uh, it's the same doctrine Christ taught. Okay? The apostles' doctrine is the doctrine of Christ. Okay? They would have no other doctrine. You could not get them to believe any other doctrine. They would not wish to have any other doctrine. There is only one doctrine, and that's the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ. You might read the second epistle of John. There's three little epistles that John wrote right before book of Jude and Revelation. And he said, if you go by any other doctrine other than the doctrine of Christ, if you as much as wish them Godspeed, you become a partaker of their evil deeds if you know better. Okay. That's what makes a big difference. When you know better, when you know the truth, uh, you can't play church with the people next door. Okay. Uh, Mary from Tennessee. I, I have been studying Bible with you and I've learned more about the Bible with you. I, well, that, that, when you teach chapter by chapter, we do, don't we? I would go to church when I leave. I don't remember what the pastor said. This question is about the seventh trump, okay? Do we stay at home? Uh, until, unless the, the Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit will take over at that time and instruct you entirely. You will stay at home until he does. I'm out of time. Hey, you know what? I love you all a bunch because you enjoy studying God's word chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Let the Lord speak. Okay. Listen to him. Let him know you love him. It'll make his day. And boy, when you make his day, he's going to make yours. We are brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, bless him. He will always, I do mean always, bless you. Okay. Now, most important, though, you listen to me good now here. Stay in his word. Every day in his word is a good day, even with trouble. You know why? Because Jesus Yeshua is the living word. Hearing God's word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645. 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you.